We're in Yogyakarta on the island of Java in Indonesia. This place is street food paradise and we're here to eat. So let's get food hunting for this video. Yogyakarta, the cultural heart of Java, is a street food paradise. This is the eighth video in our nine part video series from Indonesia. In this video, we're taking you into the heart of Jogja's neighborhoods to where the locals eat. Watch out for traditional foods like jenang and guduk, smashed fried chicken, and kopi joss, charcoal coffee. You don't want to miss this video. Get ready for some mouth-watering food. I'm Thomas. And I'm Sheena, and we're chasing a plate. We hope you're hungry. Let's eat. Jogjakarta, or Jogja as it's known by the locals, is the cultural hub of Java and <laughs> it's so tight in these alleyways. So it has a really, really rich food culture. And so we're starting our food hunting today at the local market. And local markets are some of the best places to eat traditional foods. And we're here to eat something called jenang, which is a type of porridge. So let's go and get some. In the corner of this market, there is a really famous jenang seller. Now, jenang is a dish which is made up of sweet porridge. So, let me talk you through what it is. So, you can see here, there's a number of different colored porridges. This white one here is called bubu sum sum and it's made up of uh, rice flour, coconut milk and then it's flavored with pandan leaves. This pink one here is called bubu mutiara and it's made up of a uh, sago and it's quite sticky as you can see. And then we've got this brown one here which is bubu grendel and it's made up of uh, rice flour again and it's brown because it's got palm sugar in it. And then there's this other lighter yellow colored one. I'm not sure what that one is called but again I think it's made out of rice flour and then at the end after she'd put all of the um, bubos into the coconut uh, or banana leaf she then poured I think it was coconut milk uh, coconut milk mixture over the top and it is served in such a beautiful vessel so this is called a pinchuk this woven basket and so it's got you've got the woven basket and then the banana leaf on top and then the food inside so let's just taste this thing it is slightly warm to the touch and it's really sticky looking all right let's try and get a spoonful which has got all of those different um, porridges in it oh it's really sticky and gluggy mm. Whoa. That is tasty. It's really, really sticky. It's gluggy, but it's got a beautiful silky texture. And then it's just a little bit sweet. That is really good. Let's go for another bite. You can see here, there's um, a couple of balls in that brown uh, porridge. And that's made out of rice flour. So it's like a glutinous rice flour dumpling. Let's try one of those. Mmm, I all my hair. Mmm, mmm, all over my face. Mmm, it's really good. The dish is a really great balance between savory and um, sweet. So it's not overly sweet, it's not overly salty, it's just a perfect combination. <coughs> and you can get all types of jenna. There's something like 20 different types of combinations. So this is just this seller's combination. And it's not just a really popular or traditional breakfast food. It has a lot of uh, symbolism as well in Javanese culture. So jenang is often presented at certain festivals and ceremonies. So it has a real cultural significance. This is pretty amazing. And her setup is awesome as well. So she's in 
the corner of this really local market. She's seated up on this sort of raised platform and she's got these big, big pots filled with all the different uh, porridges. She's just ladling, ladling them out into the pinchoks and everyone is just tucking in. It is delicious. We've left the market to hunt down one of Jogja's most famous foods and that is guduk. And guduk is a dish which is made from young unripe jackfruit that's been stewed with uh, palm sugar and coconut milk and it is a really traditional food here in Jogja. And the stall that we're about to visit has a real history. So Imba Lindu who uh, founded the stall she founded it in the 1940s and she's now 98 years old. She doesn't run the stall anymore, her daughter does, but she still cooks all of the food. So I am super excited to eat this really historical, traditional dish. This place is really popular. We've got here at quarter to ten in the morning. So this this dish is served all through the day, but um, we're having it for breakfast from this stand, and they already ran out of rice. So we have all the important bits, but we don't have any rice. So look, this is the good. This is the young stewed jackfruit, and it's brown because it's um, cooked with teak leaves. So they've all bleached out into the dish, and it really it just looks like um, pulled beef. So it looks like meat, but it's just jackfruit. So very young jackfruit. So because it's a it's a young jackfruit, it's obviously very firm. So it's not ripe. So it's it's held a lot of texture and that's how it's broken up into these tiny little fragments that make it look like a piece of slow cooked meat that's been pulled. And then to go with it we have kritek which is a, a beef skin so there's beef skin there you can see it's kind of gelatinous that where that um, skin's cooked in the liquid. There's uh, some little bits of tempeh so there's some tempeh hiding in there uh, which is some fermented soybeans and looks like a bunch of chili and there's also some stink beans hiding in there, some uh, pitai I think they're called. And then we've got an egg, so a braised egg and I think the egg will be braised in a palm sugar. So they really like their sweet food here in um, Jogjakarta or Jogja. And so they braise those eggs in sugar. Alright, I want to have the star of the show first. So this, um, good look, this is the, the jackfruit. Oh, that is a flavor sensation. It's really soft. So it looks kind of dry, I think. It looks a little bit dry, and it looks like it's gonna be a little bit crunchy, but it's very, very moist. And, um, and really soft. Oh, that was really sweet too. That is good, it's really sweet. It's got a little bit of, um, well not a little bit, it's quite a lot of sugar. It's quite sweet, actually. Um, Oh, that is good. Now let's let's mix it in. So we'll have some of this beef skin, chili, and some tempeh in there. Let's get those both together. Oh man! Oh, mm. oh that is delicious. That tastes quite a lot like those um, stink beans, um, which have a, a beautiful sort of fresh, earthy flavour. They're called stink beans but they don't taste stinky or smell stinky. They just make your, your wee stink when you, after you've eaten them. So there's no stink going on. Oh, that's really spicy. Oh, that is good. That has a slow burn spice. It's just hit me in the back of the throat. That is an incredible mouthful. I gotta rip into this egg as well. So, oh, it's quite, quite tough, the egg. Let's rip that in two. Look at that. All well, that color's gone right through it. Let's get a bit of everything. Wow, that is spicy. It's really hitting me in the throat. That is good. That goes really well with the, with the sweetness of the dish. Mm. Oh, that is delicious. Delicious. That's really good. I think that, um, I think the, the beef dish might have some sort of fish in it, some sort of fermented fish. It's got a beautiful, salty fishy flavor that just pops through all that spiciness this is delicious Thomas has just been raving about this good dog so let's just give it a taste mm. holy moly I've got to say like it doesn't look overly appealing 
Like it looks tasty, but it doesn't look like it have a lot of flavor. But it is incredible. It is so tasty. It's uh, very sweet. The texture is so interesting. Like it's almost like Thomas says, like meat. It's got a lot of texture. Very um, loose though, and it's moist. And then that um, I got a bit of that crunchy with that mouthful, some of that beef skin. And that's got just a beautiful spice. It's just a really rounded, uh, spicy chili heat. This is sensational. We definitely came at the right time for this one. So they're just packing up the stall now. So we're still finishing our plate of food. She's all done, all done. So I'm so glad we got here in time because that is sensationally good plate of food. And look, the sand doesn't even exist anymore, so they whip out all the tables, the sign's gone. So that opens at 5 o'clock in the morning. So that's why we got the last of their food coming here at about 9.45 a.m. Unreal. If I was staying in Georgia, I'd book one of these hotels right here by the stand so I could have that for breakfast every day. Unbelievably good food. If you've watched our videos in the past, you'll know that we're all about finding the best local food in the cities that we're traveling in. And so we have jumped in a grab car and we've come to the other side of town to find another Jogja favorite. And it's called Ayam Geprek, which is smashed fried chicken with sambal chili sauce. All right, so you load up your little basket with however much rice you want. So I'm gonna just pile on a huge heap of rice. And then there's a bunch of different foods. So I can see some tofu, some tempeh, and then some vegetables, and then the fried chicken. mortar with a pestle and then they add the fried chicken and then they just pound it smash up that fried chicken so it mixes in with all that chili and oh my gosh it looks so good I'm a huge fried chicken fiend so I'm super excited about this ayam geprek and so you can see that he's completely just smashed it up the meat has fully separated from the bones I got a, a drumstick and also a, a chicken wing and the crispy batter looks really really good and I asked for three chili so it'll be interesting to see how hot they are I'm just gonna get a bite of this chicken and then also some rice so I got rice and also a big pile of the chayote which is a vegetable it's from the gourd family mmm mmm that's really really good the chicken is so tender and it's got a real beautiful flavor and then that chili is quite a sharp spice I think three is enough because they're quite fiery. Mmm. Time to get another bite. Some more of that chicken and that batter, which is really, really crunchy. Get some rice and I might add some of that vegetable on top as well. Well, it's like a massive bite. Mmm. Mmm. Oh. That batter is super, super crunchy. And the vegetable is very soft. It almost is like a like a melon. It's got a really soft texture. It melts in your mouth almost. Oh, this is good. It's going down a tree. The next stop we're making is for a cup of coffee, but don't tune out because this is very unique. It's not as boring as it sounds. This is going to be a pretty cool cup of coffee.
cup of coffee is called Coffee Josh and it's super, super unique in that they put a huge chunk of charcoal in there. So he made up the, the coffee, pretty just standard sugar, bit of coffee powder, hot water, and then he dumped in a piece of boiling hot charcoal that came straight off the fire, the fire that's being used to, to heat all of their hot water for their drinks. Dumps that charcoal in, it just starts absolutely fizzing because obviously the the charcoal is a lot hotter than the boiling water that's just gone in there. So it just sort of super boils really quickly the top part of the, the coffee. And what it's meant to do is pull out all of the acidity. So take away that acidity from the coffee. You're meant to leave it in for about a minute and then take it out. I assume if you leave it in too long it will probably start to tank the coffee and not be so good. So I'm gonna take this out now. You can see that, so it's just wood charcoal. I've got a couple of bits in there. And charcoal's a, a pretty amazing substance, actually. Um, it, it's used by um, hospitals a lot to take poison out of people. So if you've had a drug overdose or if you've been um, bitten, I think, by something really like poisonous, it drags poison out of your body. Um, we actually carry charcoal with us for if we have stomach upsets while we're traveling because it pulls the poison if you take charcoal tablets. So this is probably kind of good for you too. It's like meant to be good for your tummy. It is boiling hot. Hmm. Oh, it does have a sort of a earthy taste. Oh, it's really hot. I can only take tiny sips, but it's quite sweet. You put a, not too much sugar. We just got them to add a little bit of sugar. It's definitely, it's not acidic at all. It's a little bit sweet. It's got a sort of a, an earthy, burnt taste to it. And then just really tastes like a, a coffee. I mean, it's not groundbreaking different in its flavor, but it's super, super interesting. It is a very unique way to be serving coffee. That was a great food day here in Jokshire. This is one of three videos we've filmed while we're here, and we've filmed another bunch of videos all over Indonesia. So make sure you check those ones out. Hit thumbs up on this one if you enjoyed it, and hit that subscribe button for more content, because next up, we're heading to Korea. Thank you so much for watching. The food scene in Jogja is just amazing and we are loving finding all of the local hidden gems. Uh, hit that subscribe button like Thomas said so you don't miss out on more content. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Jumpalagi! Jumpalagi and check out our Patreon page if you'd like to support more content like this one. Jumpalagi! Jumpalagi!